We're very proud to be hosting APEC for the unprecedented third time. They say third time's a charm. We're going to try and demonstrate that over the next few days. And we also look forward to passing the baton to Peru at the end of this week for APEC 2024. The United States believes in that vision, a region where economies are free to choose their own path and their own partners, where problems are dealt with openly, where rules are reached transparently and applied fairly, where goods, ideas, people flow lawfully and freely. We have made real progress toward that more prosperous future. Just since the creation of this forum three decades ago, GDP in the region has increased from $19 trillion to $52.8 trillion. The climate crisis is exacerbating natural disasters and fueling extreme temperatures, upending supply chains, destroying crops. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has further undermined food and energy security. So we have to meet this moment head on. That's why the United States chose to focus our host here on creating a resilient and sustainable future for all. Each of us recognizes that inequality within and between our countries hinders the growth of our entire region and that more inclusive economies are also stronger economies. We may speak different languages and have different upbringings, but we have much more in common than we might think. We all want peace. We all want to provide for our loved ones. We all want a tomorrow that is better than today. APEC, welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to the United States. It is particularly wonderful for us. The workers that power our factories, teach our children, make our clothes, and care for our sick. Only when we put real people at the heart of what we do can we truly use trade as a force for good. Leaders and on so many other aspects of preparations for Leaders Week. Let's continue to focus on the different and innovative ways we can implement sustainable trade and investment reforms, particularly those that are relevant to women and those with untapped economic potential within our societies. Let's also take stock of our work at the World Trade Organization. Our economies were able to deliver important outcomes at the 12th Ministerial Conference and as we are moving rapidly towards MC13, we should build on those successes and channel our focus to reforming the WTO to better respond to today's needs. I also want to make sure to thank our ABAC Chair, Dominic Ng, for all of ABAC's work throughout this year. Thank you.